What's up guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new design tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. Now in this tutorial, we'll be creating a typographic label design for the pig and whistle in Photoshop. To do this, we will be using the double porter typeface from Phenotype, which is a part of the Font Guru's Essential Library. With this massive collection of 320 fonts, you'll have the ability to transform your work and blow your clients away. In addition to the typeface, we'll also be working with a fun vintage illustration from the Design Cuts Marketplace, along with a free mock-up to complete our design. If you're all ready to get started, then fire up Photoshop and let's jam. Now, right away, what we're going to do here is download and open the free mock-up. We're going to start off this one just by customizing the scene a little bit and working with this file. So this is a freebie that you guys can download from Pixel Buddha, and just go ahead and grab that from the written portion of the tutorial uh, where we will be providing a link for this mock-up. Now, once you have this mock-up, the first thing we want to do here is select this background layer on the very bottom. Now, we'll come down and add a solid color adjustment layer, and we'll enter the hex value 1E2F35, which is this nice kind of bluish gray color. Now, go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice right away that there's obviously something going on here where these uh, kind of white boxes are spilling outside of the border here. So what we want to do to fix that is see if there's anything that we can use to create a selection. And there is. So hold the command key and click on the layer mask thumbnail of this color adjustment layer that you see right here. And once you hold down the command key and click on that, that's going to activate a selection around the label. Now select this working layers folder. And if you just turn that on and off, you can see that that's what's giving us the problem. So while your selection is still active, Select that folder and choose Add Layer Mask from the bottom of the Layers palette. Once you've done that, we're going to select this Working Layers Group folder on the top, hold the Shift key and select this Color Adjustment Layer, and then press Command Control G to put it into a new Group folder. Double click on the Group 1 text and just rename this folder Label. Now let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And I want to bring back the original shadows from this layer. So I'm going to select the Color Fill Adjustment Layer and then just change the Blend Mode to Multiply. And now you can see that our shadows are coming back through. Now, if I zoom in a little bit closer even, you can see that when we look at our label here, it's actually spilling outside of the jar a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do here is press P to get the pen tool and just create a point there, just on the, the very top side of that label, and then make another point down here at the bottom. Now, I will click around the outside of that shape to close it. Once the path has been closed, press Command, Control, and Return on the keyboard to activate a selection. Come up to the Select menu and choose Inverse. And now we'll select our Label Group folder and click on the Add Layer Mask icon once again. Now you can see that we have a nice flush edge there. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Where I'm just going to make a point here right along the top edge. Click to make another one on the bottom. And then just close the shape so that we can trim it. Press Command, Control, and Return on the keyboard. This time we don't need to inverse our selection, however, because we already have a layer mask. So all we're going to do is make sure that we have a solid black foreground color selected, and then press Alt, Option, and Delete on the keyboard. Now to deselect, you can press Command, Control, D, and we've now tidied up our label a little bit more. Now the next thing I want to do is come inside of this label folder, click on the Working Layers folder, and then add a new layer just above it. Press B on the keyboard to switch over to your brush tool. Press the number 2 to reduce the opacity to 20, and then hold down the right bracket key to make your brush quite a bit larger, maybe until around 300 or so. And then all we're going to do is hold down Shift and the left bracket to create a soft edge brush. Alright, so now I'm just making it a little bit larger. I'm going to go with 400 for the size. Move my layers palette out of the way. And all we're going to do here is press X on the keyboard to toggle between our foreground and background colors until you have white as a solid foreground color. Now, if you have other colors in here, like red, green, or whatever, you can just press D to reset your default colors, and then X to toggle back and forth between the two. Now, what we want to do here is hold down the Command Control key and click on the layer mask attached to our Working Layers folder. Okay, and that's going to, once again, give us a selection here of our label design. Now, what we want to do is click somewhere up here, maybe, you know, above and off to the right of our label, and then just click and drag straight down while holding the Shift key. And that's just going to bring a straight line down with our soft edge brush. Now we can make it a little bit smaller, come a little bit closer to the edge of the label, and make a second pass, just clicking and dragging down while holding shift. Okay, now we can just rename this layer, side, highlight, 
and we'll go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to overlay. All right, so we now have a nice little edge light here on the side of our label. And if you want, maybe we'll just reduce the opacity to about 60 just by pressing the number six on the keyboard, just so it's not quite as intense. Now let's come up to the file menu and choose place embedded. And we can now import our free illustration that we're using here. And this is courtesy of Graphic Goods from the Design Cuts Marketplace. And you'll see here that we have this vintage illustration of this pig here. And this is part of a farm animal collection, uh, which you guys can see the link for the full bundle in the written portion of the tutorial. Now, as soon as I bring this in here, you'll see that it's trapped inside the jar. It looks like the pig is trapped in the jar. So what we want to do is move it outside of this label folder. Okay, close the folder, and then use Command and the left bracket to move it down so that it's below both the label folder and the honey color folder. Now press Command Control T to do a free transform, and click and drag outwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift to scale it up a bit. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. And then let's press the number 5 on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 50%, or we'll go a little bit lower. Let's try 40% instead. All right, and that looks pretty nice. So we now have a nice little backdrop there behind our jar. And from here, what we're going to do is crop the image a little bit to keep the focus on the center. So press C on the keyboard, and then you'll notice up here that you have this option called Delete Cropped Pixels. Let's make sure that that is turned off, because if we want to add more space after we crop it, um, you know, allowing the pixels to remain there will make that job a lot easier. Okay, so all we're going to do here is drag inwards from any of the four corners while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. Maybe just make that a little bit taller there. And somewhere about there looks pretty good, so let's just go ahead and press Return on the keyboard. And you'll see that once we crop this, if I wanted to go back in and add a little bit more uh, space to any of these sides, I can just simply extend any of those handles and the background will still be there. If we had left that delete cropped pixels option off, we would be pretty much out of luck. So just want to make sure that that's not checked. Okay, and there we go. Now our canvas is a little bit tighter and closer to our jar, which is exactly what we want. So now that we've basically customized our mock-up a little bit, we've tightened things up, we can begin working on our actual label design. But before we do, I just want to encourage you guys and remind you to go ahead and save this file with a different name. Alright guys, so now that we've saved our file, let's go back in here into the Label Group folder, and we're going to double click on this first Design Smart Object layer here, just to go inside of our label. Now, once we're inside, you can just ignore that, right? We're going to delete a lot of these layers. So select the very top layer here, this chessboard layer, hold the Shift key and come all the way down here to the Element layer, and click on that so that you now have everything selected. And now what we want to do is just deselect this one more Ipsum layer. So hold the command control key and click on that layer and then press delete to get rid of everything else. All right, so you should now just have these three layers inside. What we're going to do is select this layer two layer, come down here to the adjustment layer icon and add a solid color adjustment layer. And let's type in the hex value FDBE00, which is this nice yellowish orange color. Click OK, and then we're going to change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And then what we're going to do is add a new layer just above that. Press the letter G on the keyboard to get your gradient tool. And check the settings up top here to make sure that you have a solid to transparent gradient. And we also want to be working with a radial gradient. So just go ahead and make sure those settings are checked off. And all we're going to do here is click somewhere in the center of our design and drag outwards. Now let's go ahead and change the blending mode of that layer from normal to overlay and then reduce the opacity to about 55% just by tapping 5 two times on the keyboard, and we now have a nice center highlight. So next let's move on to this inner stroke layer where we have these bars along the top and the bottom, and all we're going to do here is close these bars. So press M on the keyboard to get your marquee tool, click and drag somewhere up here along the top, and just extend it to about the middle of this second thin bar here. Press the letter X to toggle back and forth so that black is your foreground color, and then press Alt, Option, and Delete to fill your selection with the foreground color. Now once again, press Command, Control, D to deselect everything. Press the letter M once again, and come down here and do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm just clicking and dragging from the middle all the way across, down somewhere about here. Alt, Option, Delete, Command, Control, D, and we've now filled in both of those bars. Now let's zoom in a little bit here so that we can see this small type at the bottom here. We call this mouse type. It's usually just reserved for that kind of like legal 
mumbo jumbo stuff that nobody ever reads on the bottom of these jars and labels. Um, but we're just going to customize this a little bit more. It's basically just to give us that, you know, effect of realism, but it doesn't have to be anything specific. So lorem ipsum is basically just serving as uh, some dummy text here. Now open the character panel, which if you guys don't have it, you can access it from the window menu. And all we're going to do here is change this font from Myriad to Avenir Book. All right, we can make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it 6.5. And then let's also center it. So you can either center it just by coming up here to the toolbar and clicking on that, or you can use the paragraph panel found under the window menu, or you can use the keyboard shortcut command control shift and C. All right, now once you've done that, just go ahead and create a line break on this first line. All right, and then let's add another line break over here, just so we have a few more words on our third line, because it always looks weird when you just have, you know, an orphan, just one word by itself. All right, so that's something we try to avoid uh, when we're laying out type and labels and this sort of thing. All right, let's go ahead and create another new layer. Press T on the keyboard to switch back to our type tool. And what we want to do now is just type out the word pig in all uppercase letters. Press Command Control A to select all. And we're going to make the size of this around 386. All right, nice and large. And then using the character panel, let's go ahead and change this from Avenir to our double quarter six regular typeface from Phenotype. And this is the main primary typeface that we will be working with. Now it has these nice little serifs on it that give it a bit of a vintage feel, which is pretty cool. And all we're going to do here is just center our text, make it nice and big, and then press Command Control, Alt Option, Shift, and the letter N to create a new layer, or just click on the new layer icon down here. Press T once again, and this time we'll type out an ampersand, followed by the word whistle. Now press Command Control A to select that entire line of text. And we're just going to reduce the size of this quite a bit here to somewhere around 114 point. And we can change the tracking setting to about 20. Okay, and then let's just drag this over here and try to line it up with our main text. So press Command Control T to adjust it. And then just drag in while holding the Shift key move it down while holding the shift key so that it lines up nicely with the edges of our font. All right, now we're going to take both of these layers, select the top one, hold shift and select the second layer, press command control G to put it into a group folder. And let's just rename this folder pig and whistle. Okay. And then tap it down a little bit so that it's nice and centered just on top of our highlight. Now what we're going to do is double click on that group folder and add a stroke layer style. And make sure that you have a two pixel stroke set to a position of outside. And then for the fill color, we're going to use D49800. Click OK twice to apply the changes. Now go back inside this folder, select both of these text layers, and press Command Control J to duplicate them. Command Control in the right bracket to move them up above the folder. Now close the folder and press Command Control in the left bracket to move them below the folder. Okay, now we're going to offset this by tapping down once and to the right once while holding the shift key. And that's going to give us a nice sort of extended shadow. Now, once you've offset the text there, while both layers are still selected, press the number four to reduce the opacity to 40%. Now, from here, what we're going to do is press the letter U on the keyboard, or just come over here and select your rectangle tool. And we wanna make sure that we have a solid black fill selected and a stroke of none. Now, once you have that, all we're going to do is click on the edge of the letter P here in pig, click and drag to the opposite side to the edge of the G, okay, and create a long, thin rectangle. Not too thin, but somewhere about that, like a medium, medium width looks pretty good. All right, and we're just going to have this run along the top of our title here. Press Command Control J to duplicate it, then click and drag downwards while holding the Shift key to create another copy along the bottom. Now, let's add another new layer. Press T on the keyboard and click. And this time we're going to type out ESTD 1893. Press Command Control A to select it. And let's change this back to Avenir Black. Okay, and then we can reduce the size of this type to about 20 or 21 points, depending on what looks good. And we'll also want to space this out quite a bit. So let's adjust the tracking while we're at it. I'm just going to line up the left edge of the E with the bottom black bar. 
come in here and select the text and then let's go ahead and change the tracking setting to about 1420 All right space those letters out and then just reposition it accordingly now you may need to scale it up just a bit so that it reaches the other side of the bar okay and that looks pretty good and then let's go ahead and create another new text layer come up here and click along the top and let's just change the color to blue it doesn't really matter just anything that we can see on the top here and we'll type out all natural jam preserves press command control a to select the entire line of text and now let's go ahead and change the tracking from 1420 down to about 40 okay and then we're just going to center this above our title let's go ahead and make it just a little bit larger right just to make it the same width right and that looks pretty good now the reason we're not so focused with the fill color here is because we're going to knock this text out of the black bar and reveal our background texture and color instead so to do that what we're going to do is hold the command control key and click on the thumbnail icon of that text layer and go ahead and turn the visibility off come down here and select your inner stroke layer come up to the select menu and choose inverse and now we're just going to apply a layer mask okay and as long as the visibility of that text layer is off you should now see your background instead now let's come back up to the file menu and we're going to go down to place embedded and we're going to bring in another copy of our pig illustration from the freebies folder okay and just choose place and all we're going to do is place a pig on each side here of our label so once you bring that in we'll just hold the shift key click and drag it over to the right all right some more about there and you know maybe we can make it a little bit bigger while we're at it and just push it over a little bit more all right some more about there and then press the number 4 to reduce the opacity to 40%. Press Command Control J to duplicate it. Command Control T to do a free transform. And then click anywhere on the illustration while holding the Control key to reveal this drop down menu where we can then choose Flip Horizontal. Now click, hold the Shift key, and drag it to the opposite side. All right, so that we can basically mirror what we've done on the right. Okay, and now all we have to do is press Command Control S to save this and then command control W to close out once it is finished saving and it'll bring us back to our main mockup file in Photoshop. So now we are back in here and we just need to make a few last finishing touches here. So let's go inside of this working layers group folder and the first thing we want to do is select this top working layers layer in here that has a blending mode of screen and we're going to change it instead to color dodge. And it's just going to make it a bit more punchy and vibrant. Okay, and then go ahead and select this layer 2 layer inside, and we'll change this one from normal to overlay. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to do here is just turn off, let's actually just go ahead and turn off this last working layers layer inside. All right, so know that may be a little bit confusing because we've got a working layers folder with three working layers layers inside, but we want the first one to be color dodge, the second one to be multiply, and the third one will be off. Okay? Now, once you've done that, we can go ahead and collapse all of our folders, and we now have our beautiful pig and whistle packaging mock-up design in Photoshop. So to create this, we just used one of hundreds of beautiful typefaces from the Font Guru's Essential Library. The full collection is an absolute must-have for any type enthusiast or designer looking to up their game, and the full bundle contains around 320 different typefaces that you guys can use right now in your design work. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this tutorial today. Hopefully you picked up a few new tips and tricks. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez, and we'll see you next time.